will demonstrate for you now. We'll begin with the air bike, three sets of 30 seconds each, then move to the straight leg crunch, three sets of 15 to 20 each, and finally to the side bend, where you'll do three sets of 12 to 15 per side. Let's watch the techniques of the pros. You've probably all seen the air bike, but you've probably seen it done incorrectly, as people tend to get carried away with the fun of the motion. When that happens, you end up replacing muscle burning efficiency with momentum. The air bike works at all, uppers, lowers, obliques, so let's be sure to nail our technique. Lie on your back with your hands supporting your head. Raise your legs so your thighs are perpendicular and your lower legs are just above parallel to the floor. Inhale and hold the breath as you curl up. Bring your left elbow toward your right side while drawing your right knee in to meet it, as if riding a bike. Alternate sides, left, right, left, right, continuing the motion back and forth, breathing deeply and steadily. Staying with our focus on controlled motions, don't let your elbows flap across your body, but rotate your shoulder across in a smooth, focused movement. For the air bike, don't worry so much about speed, but concentrate on controlled motion and increasing your strength through more and more repetitions as you advance. For the straight leg crunch, lie with your back on the floor and your legs straight up in the air. Then, with your arms extended in front of you, curl up to bring your shoulder blades off the floor and slowly squeeze as you reach for those toes. Hold this peak position for a second or two, then slowly lower yourself back down to the starting position. Don't jerk your body or use momentum. Keep it smooth and controlled all the way through. If this one is a little too difficult for you at first, Slide your glutes up against the wall and try it like that. After a few weeks, give it a go in the center of your room. It's a handy way to gauge your progress. The side bend is another classic. Stand straight with your feet shoulder width apart and knees unlocked. Keep your back flat and your head forward. Place your free hand behind your head and take a dumbbell in your other hand. Not so heavy that it pulls you down and not so light that there's too little resistance. To begin, bend sideways at the waist, reaching toward the floor with your non-working elbow. The range of motion your spine allows is fairly limited, so you want to especially make sure that you are not overcompensating by swaying forward or back. Go slow and stay in control. Don't ever bend laterally more than about 45 degrees because this can strain your spine and send you straight to your chiropractor. Do your complete set of reps on one side, then work the other, increasing or decreasing weight to increase or decrease difficulty. If you've mastered the intermediate routine over six weeks or more, then you're ready for following the advanced routine. This four exercise routine offers four amazing ab slicers. First, the V-up, four sets of 12 to 15 reps. Then the crunch, four sets of 15, compounded with the hip thrust, four sets of 15. And then finally, the oblique crunch, four sets of 15 to 20. Ready? Great. The V-up works both your upper and lower abs. Efficiency here depends on slow, controlled, straight back motions. Take your start position, lying on the floor, legs straight, and arms close to your sides. Now bring your shoulder blades a few inches off the floor while simultaneously bringing your feet up to roughly the same height. Inhale and hold your breath, then contracting your abs, crunch up slowly with your upper abs, reaching to touch your toes, while raising your legs high at the same time. Exhale and hold this position for about two to three seconds then slowly lower your upper torso and your legs at the same pace. If holding your legs straight is too difficult at first, here's an alternative. As you raise your upper body into a crunch, pull your knees into your chest like this. Just keep it slow, steady, and deliberate with focus on technique every inch of the way. Later, you can straighten your legs as you become stronger. We return now to the basic crunch that we performed in the starting up workout at the beginning of this program. 
but here we'll compound it with the hip thrust exercise. First, let's review the crunch. Start by lying on the floor, bend your knees so that your feet are flat and put your hands behind your head. Now, keeping your eyes focused on the ceiling, inhale slightly more than usual and hold that breath as you raise your head and shoulders as high as possible off the floor. Holding your breath gives you greater force and relieves tension on your spine by creating intra-abdominal pressure. As you rise, round your upper back and slowly shift your focus downward toward the horizon. Hold this up position for a second or so. Exhale and slowly lower your body until your head and shoulder blades contact the floor. Relax, pause for a second or two, and repeat. Now we're going to employ a variation of the Weider Peak Contraction Principle to compound this exercise with the hip thrust. The hip thrust is a way for you to isolate your abs, using them to raise the entire lower half of your body off the ground. Start by lying on the floor with your arms at your sides, palms down. Now lift your legs perpendicular to the floor. Focusing your mind on your abs so that you use them only, lift your hips a few inches straight off the floor, pushing your heels up toward the ceiling. Your range of motion here should be very limited. Keep your movements slow and controlled without any rocking or jerking. And here's a pro tip. If you want to increase the intensity, try this exercise on an incline board and follow through with the same motion into your reps. The obliques control the rotation and flexion of your torso and are key for overall ab symmetry and strength. You're going to start by lying on your back with your shoulders flat on the floor. Then rotate your hips to one side so that they're almost perpendicular to your shoulders. Bend your knees and place your arms gently behind your head or cross them over your chest. Now to begin, inhale and hold your breath as you curl your head and shoulders up slightly. Contracting your obliques, raise up until your shoulders are approximately 20 degrees off the floor and hold that position for a second or two. You don't want to twist or bend your head. Also, be careful not to push the head-shoulder raise as high as possible, which can strain your neck, which at the moment is in a vulnerable, rotated position. Finally, only raise your head and shoulders, not your rib cage, which will also put unnecessary pressure on your spine. Exhale and slowly return to the start position. Take a moment at the bottom, then repeat. As you've just seen, you can really hammer your abs at home and get a lot accomplished. But at the gym, you'll find excellent opportunities to work your abs from different angles and with different equipment that can laser focus the tension into specific muscles. I'm about to walk you through two intermediate programs. You can alternate between them on different gym visits. And then we'll take you through one advanced program. Program one. The first program involves a raise, a crunch, and a twist, hitting all major ab areas. Start with a vertical bench knee raise, two sets of 12 to 15 reps. Follow that with a decline bench crunch, again, two sets of 12 to 15, and finish with the exercise ball twist. Give it two sets of 12 to 20. Let's work on the vertical bench a minute. We've got two fantastic ab exercises we can do here, the knee raise and the leg raise. For the knee raise, step up into the vertical bench, grasping the handles and keeping your back and forearms firmly on the pads. If all you've got is a dip stand, that'll work fine too. Holding yourself up, bend your knees from 30 to 75 degrees, Inhale and bring them up into your chest, curling your hips at the top to rotate your pelvis. Try to get those knees up as high as you can. Every inch will pay off in more work for your abs. At the top of the movement, contract hard, hold there for a second, then slowly lower your knees all the way down until they are straight again, and repeat. What you don't want to do is swing. Momentum here is the enemy as it robs you of exercise intensity. The decline bench crunch is crucial for upper ab strength and thickness to help that six pack become more prominent. Your lower abs will also contract isometrically and act as a stabilizer for the upper abs. 
set the bench at a decline of roughly 30 to 40 degrees from horizontal. Or, if you're just starting out, begin with a 10 degree angle and increase the angle later on as your abdominal strength improves. Secure your feet under the foot pads and lie face up with your torso, shoulder, and head in contact with the bench. Look at the ceiling and cross your hands over your chest. To begin, inhale and hold your breath as you contract your abs, lifting your whole upper body off the bench. As you rise, curl up, contracting those abs, shifting your gaze now to the horizon. Your head should remain neutral throughout the movement. No nodding or bobbing. Hold this position for a moment as you exhale, then lower your torso. You want to keep the tension on your abs during the entire up and down movement, so do not allow your shoulders or head to touch the bench between reps. And for you extremists out there, you may want to increase the angle past 45 degrees, but I don't recommend it. There's no need to increase the blood pressure in your head. If you want to work your abs harder, put your hands behind your head, never pulling on your neck, and focus on curling your shoulders up, and then do exactly the same movement. That's plenty of intensity to develop great abs.